Hello and welcome to the One Life Church devotional series where we cover the entire Bible in 20 months. If you would like to join us on this journey, have a look at the website below and you can follow our reading plan. Today we're on Exodus 27 and 28. 27 is a wrap up of what the tabernacle looked like. So the description of an altar about 1.4 meters high, uh, the description of the courtyard that the priests went into before they got into the holy place or the most holy place, and then the oil which was used by Aaron in ministry to the Lord. We'll talk about that tomorrow. But the next chapter, it's chapter 28 that I'd like to focus on today, which essentially describes the garments that the priests wear. And you might say, well, God, what does that have in terms of significance for me? Well, you know that you are called a priest and I am called a priest. And God doesn't waste imagery. He doesn't waste um you know, pictorial language like this, it has meaning to us. So let's have a look at what the garments mean. I'm standing in our entrance foyer. This is the Crawford entrance hall. And like most houses, we have a coat rack at the door. Now, this is the coat of my daughter. Uh, when she was a swimmer, she had a thick coat like this. It's red on the inside. That was one of her favorite colors. Anyway, let me put this on because this is the closest thing to Aaron's garment that I have in my house anyway. It reaches right down to the floor. Um, it is, it's rich. Aaron's garment was scarlet and blue and, uh, and had royalty all over it. And, you know, he, he was given a garment like this. In addition to that, he was given a breastplate. And on that breastplate, there were stones um, of the tribes of Israel uh, and upon the on the shoulders. He was also given a chain, gold chain, so he had like gold hanging around his, his neck. He had um, a turban on his head, and on top of that turban, there was a sign that said, holy to the Lord. Now you think to yourself, yeah, why all this fuss for going into the presence of God? Well, it's rich with symbolism. So, so let's have a look at it. Let me get out of the attire, because it's a a very bad approximation of what um, Aaron must have been weary. And I want to read to you a couple of scriptures that will give us an understanding of this. Firstly, 28 verse 9. Exodus 28 verse 9 says, Whenever Aaron enters the holy place, he will bear the names of the sons of Israel on his heart. So the stones were on the breastplate, also on the shoulders. And this is what it says, On his heart, on the breastpiece of decision as a continuum memorial before the Lord. Amazing. That breastplate was called a breastplate of decision. God's going to clothe them with an ability to make decisions for the people of Israel. God's going to give you an ability or he gives you an ability to make godly decisions as you walk into his presence as a priest. Uh, obviously, we said there's a sign over his head that holy to the Lord that was it was said to be on Aaron's forehead, verse 38 says, continue so he would be acceptable before the Lord. You say, oh God, why the sign? Well, as priests, we need to realize that we can come boldly into his presence, but he is a holy and fearful and awesome God. We work out our salvation with fear and trembling. But it's the entire garment that I want to speak about for a moment, because the prophets prophesied, the priests will wear garments, and these garments mean something. So Isaiah the prophet said this, I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He's covered me with the robe of righteousness. In other words, when I walk into his prison, I'm in right standing with him. As a bridegroom decks himself like a priest with a beautiful headdress, and the bride adorns herself with her jewels, I have a robe of of righteousness. In 2 Corinthians, when Paul was writing to the Corinthians who, who were up to all sorts of nonsense, he said to them, for your sake, in verse 21 of chapter 5, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, that's Jesus. He put sin on Jesus so that in him we might become the righteousness of Christ. We get garments of righteousness so when we walk into God's presence, ministering as priests, God looks at us and says, Oh, my son took your sin and he's given you righteousness. He's declared you righteous. You've become the righteousness of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 5, sorry, in Ephesians 6, 14, it says that we have to stand firm with the breastplate of righteousness. 
So as priests, as believers in Jesus, we have been clothed with righteousness. We have and the ability to walk into his presence, knowing that he sees us righteous, we become the righteousness of Christ. Aaron had to go through all sorts of elaborate pictorial demonstrations. But that was pointing to the day that you and me as priests could have a breastplate of decision. So we can make decisions for people that follow us and for ourselves and be clothed rightly, uh, worshipping in his presence.